Hello everyone, I'm Amir Kolami and uh, I'm a senior power engineer. In this presentation, I'm going through the ETAP grid code solutions. So in this presentation, I'll cover the statement of the problem in terms of what is actual uh, grid code requirements and uh, what is the problem that uh, we are trying to address and solve in ETAP. Secondly, we'll go through the challenges of the issue and uh, <clears throat> what uh, Next comes is ETAP, how is addressing all those challenges and what solution is offered in ETAP specifically with respect to all the challenges. Then we'll go through the modules and features that are offered as part of the solution in ETAP. And then lastly, we'll go through a quick demonstration uh, using the ETAP itself. So in terms of the problem statement, uh, as part of the grid code requirements, usually uh, power plants are mandated to support a certain level of reactive power with respect to their active power levels and the voltage level at the point of interconnection. This study is usually done in time domain load flow analysis. And then uh, also uh, utilities are uh, having some requirements on ride through capabilities of IBRs and power plants, meaning that in case of a voltage or frequency event, the inverter has to be capable of supporting a sufficient amount of reactive power to maintain the voltage at its neighboring buses and uh, to prevent any unwanted trippings and uh, for a certain amount of time. And all these um, criteria, including the, uh, the time that the inverter needs to be uh, maintaining the voltage and supporting reactive power, as well as the voltage level or frequency, are all mandated as part of the grid code studies. So as part of the challenges that uh, grid code studies always have are the manual nature of studies, meaning that uh, usually uh, the uh, analysis is accompanied with excessive number of calculations, which is respectively time consuming and high complexity of calculations due to the large, enormous number of uh, calculations that are required. Furthermore, the final results that are generated are usually scattered, and it's really tough to interpret the results and uh, format them in an easy, readable way. And uh, again, due to the manual nature of the process, there are high chances of mistakes being introduced to the final results. In parallel, the grid codes that are being used for grid code studies, the grid code requirements are often uh, not very complete and not really easy to understand. So uh, the, it requires a lot of time to interpret and comprehend the grid code requirement itself and then furthermore convert it to software platform, which also require, uh, requires expert domain knowledge and uh, now, this whole process again is uh, time consuming and not easy to accomplish. In terms of the solution that ETA proposes for grid code studies, uh, the most remarkable key is the automation that has been done in ETA for grid code analysis, meaning that it removes all the manual work and doing the calculations, prevents all the uh, manual uh, potential mistakes that are being introduced, and uh, uh, this is doing everything all automated and integrated and uh, conducts both uh, time domain analysis and transient stability analysis in an automated manner. Uh, ETAP also offers various tools and modules which gives the user the flexibility to customize the analysis based on their specific needs and specific requirements. As a result of the analysis, ETAP solution provides a comprehensive report which is very self-explanatory and includes a lot of um, useful information and insights uh, that can be interpreted in terms of either validating that the power plant is meeting the grid code requirement or in terms of finding a solution uh, in case of any deficiencies. And um, furthermore, ETAP includes an extensive library of grid codes um, that prevents the user to go, prevents all the unnecessary 
uh, unnecessary efforts that user needs to make towards interpretation of a grid code requirement. They can just simply go through the ETAB library and rules and find the corresponding grid code requirement and then just choose it and do the analysis based on that and uh, find their uh, final results and verify their uh, power plant capability. And uh, last but not least, uh, ETAP, uh, using the concept of identical digital twins, ETAP is offering its own EPPC. And uh, using ETAP EPPC and also the uh, grid code analysis of ETAP, it provides a very comprehensive and uh, integrated solution for power plants to operate the power plants, do transient stability analysis, and also check if the uh, power plant is meeting the grid code requirement or not, and if not, finding the potential solutions for it. As part of the modules and features that ETAP solution provides, uh, we can uh, go through rulebook, which in rulebook, capability and control of the grid code is uh, able to be selected or if in any case, if there is not already defined a grid code in the rule book of the solution, the user can uh, go and put the numbers manually and consider the customized rule book uh, during their studies. Furthermore, rule book can be used for the element capabilities and PQ capability of the elements can be either used as part of the predefined libraries or they can just add the a specific uh, capability of their elements manually based on their vendor and also all these uh, profiles are voltage dependent so the user have the capability to add all the information at any certain voltage levels and uh, this includes all the information and capability curves for pvs wtgs and inverters and primarily being used for time domain load flow uh, analysis. In PQ studies, ETAP provides an automated sweeping structure for active reactive power and voltage and generates the results based on the sequential load flow calculations and uh, time domain and generates a very comprehensive report including all the information regarding all the capabilities and all the plant uh, calculations versus the uh, final uh, comparison between the grid code that the user has um, chosen. And uh, the final results will be uh, presented to the user in an overlaying basis, meaning that the capability of the power plant and the uh, actual grid code requirements are being plotted in the same uh, axis and they can easily see and visually define if the power plant criteria, uh, if the grid code is met or not. Similarly, for right through studies, the user has the capability to go through the rule book and define their capability, right through capability of their assets in terms of voltage right through and frequency right through and uh, also they can have their primary controllers assigned to their elements again ETAP provides its own primary controllers for the elements so for PV, WTG and inverters uh, that can be easily hooked up with the grid code analyzer and uh, the final right through studies at point of interconnection uh, can be conducted so with that, we'll go through an actual demonstration within ETAP and uh, uh, we'll go through an actual example and demonstration of the results using ETAP. Uh, an example project in the ETAP folder is uh, specifically uh, put for grid code analysis. So if the user the very first time opens the ETAP, goes to tutorials and examples, renewable, there's an example project, it's called grid code. And then if they click launch project, this project that I have in here will show up in which uh, a model of a power plant is shown with uh, multiple IBRs, including composite networks of PVs, uh, battery energy storage system, a and uh, WTGs. 
each of which uh, might include one or more of each element. In here, uh, there are multiple PVs. Similarly to the case for WTGs, there are multiple uh, WTG elements. And uh, with the primary controllers, it can be done uh, for uh, as part of the PPC studies. Furthermore, the power plant is connected to the utility on the grid side with the a point of measurement bus and the meter and the tie lamp and the POM collector. This is the grid code analyzer which will uh, do our grid code analysis for us, associated elements, DLL. Uh, all the associated elements and the meters, uh, the direction of the meter in terms of the power getting imported or exported to the power plant and uh, the grid side bus, voltage sweep, power grid, needs to be defined, energy storage, statcom, inverters, and then also in the capability analysis, the settings related to a study are to be determined and uh, specified. So this gives the user the flexibility to define their studies and modify their studies based on their specific needs and uh, customize it based on their um, actual requirements of each project or what they are uh, more interested in, they can modify it. We have multiple settings in here, and uh, which defines the P base, either automatic or uh, manual, uh, number of sweepings for P and Q as part of the automation of um, grid code analysis. They can uh, choose the minimum active power that it starts the sweeping from, and also the voltage step, basically used for presentation of the results and the final uh, output generated. And then uh, they can also use the power set points for VQ plots. And uh, again, this is a three-dimensional study and the, there's active power, reactive power, and voltage. Here, the user can define at which active power set points they want their VQ curves to be plotted. And then finally, dispatch energy storage systems can be either manual or auto. Manual means there is no command from uh, the grid code analysis and uh, auto means it, it is considered as part of the power plan for grid code studies as well. Write through is the rule for rule ID for the write through uh, studies of the power plan. So, here I want to quickly go through the rules and capabilities. So, here under the rules, there's a capability and control as part of the ETAP solution. This is where the user can define their specific uh, inverters uh, capabilities as well as their grid codes. There are an extensive number of grid codes here. It's evolving. We are adding a lot of uh, further grid codes for covering pretty much entire potential grid codes in here as much as possible that the user can easily select. And this is again in an evolving stage now. For instance, uh, if the user selects ENA uh, EREC and then edit, they can see multiple information. This uh, used to conventionally uh, require a lot of manual effort to understand and interpret the grid based on the standard. Similarly, the user has the capability to go and select the element capability in here and uh, attach it to the certain element or if they don't see their element capability they can just add it manually and um, do, do the other points themselves in, in, in define a new id and or even they can just modify one of the existing one in here and add new columns new rows delete them and add a bunch of points in here based on their specific needs so this is part of the solution again. This is very similarly for write through studies as well. Uh, there are uh, different requirements uh, based on the grid codes, different standards for write throughs, and uh, different capabilities can be defined for the elements here as well that are being deployed as part of the automated grid code studies in ETA. So in this example grid code project, again, as part of the example projects by default in ETA, if the user goes into scenario wizard, uh, there are multiple scenarios already defined, uh, all of which are addressing the grid code studies. So uh, starting with capability no statcom scenario, if we just load this very quick, 
you'll see that it's uh, in this system a statcom is put out of service this part of the study is to define what is the impact of a statcom and how uh, the grid code uh, requirement can be met by adding extra reactive power support to the system so running the capability no statcom will result in generation of a uh, report as soon as the studies are completed. And in this report, you see that various sheets are included, uh, which covers multiple information regarding device capabilities and information and the grid code that is being used, and also the calculation results at different voltage levels. At 95% PQ and also the 100%, and the results are also visualized, which makes it very easy for the user to validate if their plant is capable of generating uh, as much Q as the grid mandates or um, it has deficiencies and cannot. For instance, in this case, you see that at voltage 100%, actually this plant is not able to generate enough reactive power. So going into the further sheets of this uh, report, you see that it goes into the V power factor. Uh, this is customizable. The user can change it to V uh, reactive power instead of V power factor at different uh, active power levels. So just to verify how the impact of the statcom would work on this uh, results, now we'll run the capability statcom case, which actually puts the statcom in service. Running this case, we'll generate another Excel file based on the newest studies with the statcom in the system. And going into the voltage 100%, you see that now the blue curve is actually covering the red curve, meaning that the reference is considered within the power plant capability. So adding the statcom solved the issue, and with ETAP automated solution, uh, we can validate how this adding extra reactive power support using an uh, extra statcom in the system and uh, helped us to meet the grid code requirement and the results are final results are also validated same results can be uh, monitored and um, analyzed at different voltage levels again there's a very good visualization of the results both for uh, voltage uh, reactive power and also uh, active power reactive power uh, plots so there are a lot of other studies for write through in here as well we'll do low voltage write through at point 0.2 which means uh, the event in the system is a define of voltage impact of minus 80 percent which is bringing the voltage at utility to 20 percent so running this case again similar to the pq studies in right through studies an excel file is generated as part of the results and uh, uh, various information are included in terms of all the measurements and the actions that are taken in the system. If there are any trippings, the user can see them in here and verify if the tripping is correct and based on uh, what is needed or not. And also there are information regarding V-phase chart and PQ charts, reactive power support uh, at uh, the point of interconnection. And also the user can see uh, all the information regarding v1 charts and uh, finally p hertz charts and also qv charts at the point of interconnection to define if the system is capable of meeting the grid code requirement or not and uh, these all are done uh, through the etap solution and uh, yeah thank you so much for your attention